good morning to everybody. My name is Carlos Cane, uh, working at CNM in, in the Gas Central Group. And, and for me today, it's a great uh, pleasure to introduce Estela Vallejos, uh, who has been in our institute uh, now for a while. And just to tell you that uh, she's from Bolivia. She studied uh, electrotechnics engineering or something similar there. Then she moved to uh, you know, University, Universitat uh, Rovira i Virgili in Tarragona to do the PhD thesis. I think that then she went as a postdoc to UCL uh, in, in London. She moved back to Spain and she started uh, working with us at CNM in, uh, in a position of uh, Juan de la Tierra. Then she got a, a Marie Curie uh, fellow to go to CITEC in Czechia. And after three years, she came back, uh, and now she is uh, uh, Ramon y Cajal. She holds the position of Ramon y Cajal in, in CNM. So you see that the expertise, or at least the the the, the time, the, the, the years and, and time working on, on gas sensing is, is quite a lot. And for us, it has been a, a good a good combination with what we were doing here at CNM, because in principle, in the past, we were dealing with gas sensors mostly on, on the transducer part, which is the microelectronics part, which is where we were at. We were supposed to be experts. And thanks to, to the, the knowledge of Stella now, she's very good on material development and, and nano, nano sites, especially, and also in characterization. So now we are able not only to provide transducers, but uh, full gas sensors because we also integrate these materials on our devices and and we can collaborate with plenty of partners thanks to his to her knowledge. So thank you, Stella, for being with us and thank you to the rest to, to being connected and I hope that you will understand quite well what we do because uh, she's also good, very good in, in speaker on that. Thanks a lot and good luck to everybody. Okay, so we come. Thanks, uh, Carlos, for the warm introduction, and uh, thank you all for connecting to this uh, talk today. So, certainly, it has passed a lot of time since uh, miners used to go into the mine with a canary bird in order to have something that uh, warns from possible poisoning or dangerous gases inside the mine. Fortunately, now we have uh, sensors that can measure different factors, physical or chemical. And actually, sensors are used uh, not only in the mines, but also in other applications like the environmental protection, also in the, in in the industry, and are expected to use also in appli emerging applications like the medicine or the agriculture. So it's not a coincidence that these uh, sensors are considered key enabled components of future technologies for instance, those uh, related to the Internet of Things, and also are well forecasted actually in the market. So in today's presentation, I'm going to speak about gas sensors, and uh, I hope to give you uh, an insight in our, into our new project related to this topic. So let me share um, the contents of my presentation. In the first part, I'm going to speak about the needs and challenges of uh, around gas sensors. Then I will pass to the state of the art and specifically our work at CNM. And then uh, I will show you the objectives and the concepts we are using in our new project. So when we, so when we, it comes to gas sensors and we visualize the full value change of these devices, we can differentiate clearly two, uh, two, two parts of the, of the value change. One more related to the hardware and the other more related to the software. Somehow, till now, these two parts have been, let's say, kind of uh, divorced. And, but in the near future, it's expected these two areas are going to be more integrated in order to uh, have smart systems that can not only monitor the gases, but also predict and decide key parameters depending on the application we are using. So we expect there will be concepts uh, involved like biomimetic concepts, more electronic on boards, also edge computing and artificial intelligence into these smart systems. Of course, each, each of these aspects in the value chain of these sensors have uh, different challenges, different strategies to solve those problems. But in today's presentation, I'm going to focus especially in two, in two aspects, the ones related to the sensitive material and the transducing platform. 
So among a host of gas sensing technology for sensing gas, uh, um, metal oxide gas sensor, which is a type of semiconductors based sensor, has a lot of advantage to be integrated into these smart systems. And why? Because it has a good uh, miniaturization potential. It is also, uh, it can fabricate it also with microfabrication uh, processes, so it's compatible usually with all micro microfabrication process. And all together, uh, can help to produce sensors and to deliver sensors to the market at relatively low cost, which is important also for the applications uh, that people target. Another uh, special property that have these sensors that they can be tuned and uh, its sensitivity can be tuned to different uh, gases. And also comparing with other semiconductors, for example, they are more stable if we compare, for example, with uh, polymers or with carbon-based materials. So when we speak about metal oxide with sensors, we speak basically about uh, binary oxides, although ternary oxides are also used in the, for this uh, type of application, that have semiconducting properties and have a uh, wide band gap. So we speak about this type of metal oxides, for example, that you can see in the, in the figure. So what is the working principle of these devices? The gas sensing mechanism of these devices may be re uh, mainly relies on the absorption of the gases at the surface of uh, the semiconductor material. During this process, there is an exchange of electrons that change the conductivity properties of the film. And in that way, we have changes, for example, of the resistance that are proportional to the concentration of the gas. So we can see from here that the sensitive material actually is an important part of all the value chain and all this device. So let's come back to these figures. So uh, the challenges around the sensitive materials are normally related to improve the sensitivity, the selectivity, stability, or the speed of response. These are known as the four S of the gas sensing. Also with the materials, we can improve the operating temperatures. And uh, normally it's desired to reduce the operating temperatures close to the room temperature. So to make the story short, there are two ways to uh, influence over these uh, functional parameters. One is by reducing the material to nano size scale. It means by producing nanoparticles or nanostructures. And the other way is by incorporating intentional impurities. It can, it can be doping or uh, surface decoration with different catalytic particles. These two aspects will influence directly on the active surface area of the of the material, also in the conductivity of the material, and it will force certain surfaces, the crystal facets, to be in direct contact with the material, with the gases we want to uh, measure. So that's why synthetic methods are very important in this area. And uh, what one looks from these synthetic methods is that they uh, can produce well-defined crystals, un with uniform size, good shapes and good surface structure. Also that they can be used in the industry so they can generate in continuous batch mode that they are scalable or for example, with a, uh, to generate materials with low cost. So that's why we have uh, implemented at CNM a new method that is based on aerosol-assisted chemical vapor deposition. This method has a different advantage, but we like the most uh, that it works at atmospheric pressure and with relatively low temperatures for the nanostructure formation. So in a nutshell, this method uh, is based on a precursor that is dissolved in any uh, soluble solution. And then we have the solution that is atomized to the, to the reaction zone. During this process, the precursor will pass by different stages, first an atomization, then a vapor generation, and then will go through either homogeneous reactions that can generate ultrafine powder or heterogeneous reactions that generate uh, films. Actually, we like more this, uh, this uh, path of reaction because uh, in that way we can obtain films directly integrated over the surface of our transducing platforms. So we have made different experiments with different materials. And here you have an example of zinc oxide. Uh, by changing the parameters of the deposition and uh, different um, temperatures and so on, we have achieved to uh, deposit selectively, selectively different morphologies, and in this case for zinc oxide. So we can go for grain-like morphologies like this one, 
to uh, road morphologies like the one we have here or to microstructures like in hexagonal base or other structures. We have worked with different materials during this time. Um, we have tests for uh, we have tests for uh, tungsten oxide, for tin oxide, for iron oxide in different morphologies. We have also been able to modify these structures with catalytic particles, for example, gold or platinum. Also, we can form a nanoskeletal or junction between oxides, uh, as this example, for example, seeing uh, iron oxide and, and tungsten oxide or palladium oxide and tungsten oxide. So this technique has definitely helped us to obtain good quality structures um, with the modification of the surface. Also, it's important to mention that our technique doesn't need of catalysis seed. It means that all the nanostructures we grow are growing by vapor solid mechanisms. And we observe that um, the formation of nanostructures needs uh, low onset temperatures comparing to other reports in the literature. Here you can see examples for different materials. In the case of tungsten oxide, for, uh, for instance, we uh, are able to deposit the structures at 350 degrees centigrade. And similar structures in um, like traditional methods are deposited, for example, at 900 degrees centigrade. So what about the aspects more related to the transducing platform? When we speak about the transducing platform, the challenges associated to this area normally uh, are related to the improvements of the miniaturization. I mean, let's try to, the, to try to go to miniaturized systems that consume less power and uh, less electrical power. Also, chips that can uh, be applied for combinatorial methods, for example, the use of arrays, and also with production or methods of production that can be low cost. In this aspect, my group has worked, uh, has a lot of tradition working in this area. They were doing different uh, transducing platforms before I arrived, for example, micro hot plates. They, we have also low weight guides that are used for surface acoustic sensors, cantilevers, or yeah, just recently also micro light plates that have been developed in collaboration with uh, the University of Barcelona. But in our case, and because uh, metal oxides usually need of some activation, in this case, a thermal activation, we usually use this type of, uh, of um, transducing platforms that uh, don't have that have not only one sensor it means a transducing and a sensing material but it uh, has it can include several sensing materials and uh, with different signals from the transducers so we have integrated our materials over these platforms and here you can see the integrations are usually uniform over the membrane of this uh, micro machine hot plates here you can see an example for zinc oxide, the integration of zinc oxide, and also tungsten oxide over the electrodes of these micromembranes. So we know that uh, we can fabricate at CNN now arrays of sensors that can be used for combinatorial methods. They are very reproducible because uh, this uh, technique uh, has established, established fabrication process in the clean room. Also, we know that they consume less power, uh, less power compared to other materials, like other traditional ceramic substrates. And also, we know that we can integrate the materials over these uh, transducing plat platforms in a direct way. So what about the gas sensing results? We have made different tests for, uh, for, for gas sensing, and we have observed that our materials uh, can be tuned to be sensitive to, for example, hydrogen, toluene, nitrogen dioxide, or ethanol, and other gases as well. But what I want to show here is that the modification of the material real, really has an influence on the response. For example, by modifying the materials, we are able to increase these responses to hydrogen in this case, or to toluene. Also, we observe that the responses are very um, re repeatable. They, re they repeat it nicely. And or we can influence also on the response, on the speed of the response, for example, for this case for, of to by, for toluene, by just modifying the, the material. We have made uh, different uh, tests for concentrations and uh, different gases. And we know that now we can tune the sensitivity of our materials to different gases, for instance, those here listed. And uh, also to tune the selectivity by modifying the material and using the sensor arrays of our structures. Also, we know they are very repeatable thanks to the nanostructure features that we use. 
and uh, they are uh, stable not only because of the micro hot plates but also of the because of the stability of the sensitive material also the reproducibility of the sensors is good because um, we use a direct integra integration method of, of the for the material so we obtain good reproducibility of the of the sensors so we know we can make uh, now uh, single sensors that where, where we obtain a single signal and it's working with a sensing mechanism. And we can go also to arrays of sensors in which we can obtain different signals and uh, that work with the same, the same sensing mechanism, let's say. But now we want to go further. And we want to try to integrate sensing materials that can provide us, for example, the information of two sensing mechanisms, let's say electrical and optical, and also different signals. If we achieve this, we will go to further integration and we will improve the selectivity of the material and uh, of the sensor, sorry, and then uh, we can make a better use, of course, of the material because with one sensitive material, we can obtain more signals and more uh, different responses according to the sensing mechanism. Also, this could influence in the power consumption of these devices. So the objectives of NeoGas, actually our new project, are focused on the new and optimized development of gas-sensitive nanomaterials with a new type of devices also that operate based on two or more simultaneous sensing mechanisms. In this case, we will concentrate on electrical and optical sensing mechanisms. So we expect these systems will constitute electro, electro optical noses that uh, will be used for the detection of relevant greenhouse effect gases, like those we observe here, for example, carbon, monoxide, uh, carbon dioxide, uh, methane, and nitrous oxide. So this is the sketch of the project in which you can observe the parts more related to the hardware and also the parts related to the software. We cover uh, most of the value chain of, the, of this type of devices. But of course, this needs of uh, different backgrounds and different knowledge. And that's why our project is a coordinated project in which uh, we have different uh, partners involved. For example, the University of Extremadura, ITEFI, which is another CESIC uh, institute in Madrid, CNM, of course, and the University of Barcelona, which is actually doing the coordination of the project. Our project is framed in the societal and industrial challenges, and specifically in the climate action environment, resource efficiency, and raw materials. So let me show you the concepts uh, more related to the hardware part for this project. We expect to combine the response uh, from the sensors, the chemoresistive response and LSPR response. For this, we will develop uh, different sensitive materials that uh, with uh, especially metal oxides with embedded nanoparticles. The sensing mechanism, as I said, will be based on conductivity changes and uh, plasma resonance changes. And because we have already the base for these micro light pl plates, we will try to integrate also photo detectors in the system so we can obtain a chip of, uh, of this concept. The other concept we are, uh, we are exploring now, it's uh, the combination of chemoresistive response and luminescence response. This is uh, relatively, we are starting relatively from scratch here in terms of the device. So our tests are going to be more in the using discrete components uh, for the moment. If we achieve to, to implement this idea or this concept, then we will see the way how to integrate the, the, the chip or the sensors. For the sensitive materials here, we will use materials that have luminescence properties, um, for example, rare air top metal oxides to the materials and also metal organic frameworks. So this is the per chart of the project. Uh, CNM is leading the first uh, work package more related to the material and the um, fabrication of the transducing platforms and also the last work package related to the test on field. So this is the group that is participating in the project, and I want to take advantage of, the, of this presentation to thank very much to the usual suspects, Isabel Gracia, Carles Cané, Eduard Figueras, also to Nuria Torres uh, from the Clean Room, and uh, representing to the PhD students, uh, Milena Tomic. 
I want to thank also the clean room facilities because uh, they help a lot us in, in our work and all the, our projects. And I want to make a special mention to the mechanical workshop and the maintenance team because they have helped us to install all our characterization and the position systems in the, our laboratory in the first floor. So thanks for your attention. And uh, I hope with this work, we will continue saving this little cute canary bird. Thanks. Thank you, Stella. I think it was a very illustrative uh, pr presentation of the project and the whole metal oxide gas sensors. So now we, well, we have the open discussion as always. Uh, it's the time for you to start asking questions. Stella will be here to answer or any of the other usual suspects if they are connected. Um, and remember, you can ask your question through the chat and I will read it out loud or you can turn on your microphones. So whenever you want. Hello, this is Luis, the usual suspect when asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks a lot, Stella, for, for the presentation. Uh, the, 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 the position technique you presented us, uh, yeah. is, is this an, an scalable technique? This is something that can produce a lot of uh, samples because I know you are working in, in, a, in a reduced setup that is good for, for for producing some some chips, but this this technique is really a scalable one. Yeah, it's a scalable technique. Of course, now in the laboratory we have something the most more small. I mean, adapted to our laboratory. But uh, yeah, it, because it's based on CBD, it can be implemented and um, and I mean it can be scalable. Actually, when I was working, I was using this method in um, in UCL in, in England. And uh, they actually work with companies and so on and produce uh, larger faces, I mean, like for mirrors and things like this. So it's something that can be scalable for sure. And you mentioned that uh, the reaction can be homogeneous or heterogeneous, yeah, and, and that you prefer the heterogeneous one, I think, no, you said? Yes. Uh, uh, how, how do you control? How, how do you, you know, uh, are sure that uh, you are not getting powders, but you are getting films? Yeah, we don't have like a physical, let's say, or more calculation or computing uh, studies of that. But uh, we know uh, that um, that we can control these uh, parameters by, especially by the temperature we use and the times of residence of the of the precursor or the droplets inside the reaction chamber. So basically, these two parameters control somehow if we are passing through a monomogeneous reaction or heterogeneous. And of course, we we realize clearly if it has been a production of only powder or um, or uh, actually the film that we are expecting to find. And can you, ma can you manage to the deposit selectively on the surface in some places and not in others, or the, you grow every, everywhere? Well, basically the technique grows everywhere, but we have managed to deposit like uh, specifically in areas where in which we want, like uh, I was showing, for example, over the membranes of the sensor by using, um, uh, how's the name now, I forgot, um, mask, well, I'm not a well, shadow mask, sorry, just okay. a shadow mask that uh, allow us just to deposit in that area. Of course, the resolution, I mean, we can go some microns a bit in or out of the membrane, but yeah, we are able to confine the deposit in a specific area we want. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so there are a bunch of questions on the chat. I will read in order. Borja says, uh, which is the advantage of the optical readout with respect to the electrical one? Yeah, we expect that, um, basically it's a good question. We expect that the uh, uh, sensors, I mean, the same material could respond differently. Uh, well, according to the gas, for example, it could respond differently in resistive mode than in optical mode. Maybe in optical mode, for example, we will have responses, let's say, for to carbon monoxide, but in the resistive mode, we are going to have a, more, a better response to nitrogen dioxide. 
let's say just as an example. So we expect that we are going to be able to use the fingerprints of, uh, of the uh, group of gases easily by using these two elements. I mean, we are not expecting that they are going to respond always to the same gas. So selectivity basically will be improved in that way. Okay, thank you. Now, David Batet, uh, thanks you for the presentation. And he asks, are there any specific nanostructure geometries that work better than the other such gas sensors? Yes, uh, actually, I'm happy that you asked that, David, because uh, I had in my presentation another slide, but I, you know, because of the time, I didn't share it. But it's true that the uh, specific shapes uh, influence also in the sensitivity of the material. And that's because uh, when you have a specific shape, uh, uh, you have a, a specific crystal plane or a facet of the crystal that is di in direct contact with the with the gas. So there are studies of different crystals. Uh, it means different shapes at the end that have a better or worse response to a specific gas. For example, octahedral tin oxides uh, have been found to be better for uh, ethanol. For example. Okay. Thank you. And now Francesca, also thanks you for the presentation. And she says, I have a question related to the availability of these rare earth materials you propose to use. Where are they obtained from? Are they cheaper than the other materials or easier to process? Uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm catching well the question. Yeah, but uh, basically we are, we introduce these materials by yeah, well, buying a precursor basically of the material. We have identified now a couple of precursors, for example, in the case of Erbion, that have worked well with the uh, CBD and specifically with the uh, aerosol-assisted chemical vapor deposition. So, and there are also in the literature other precursors that uh, for these uh, air, air rare elements that can be used for this technique. So, yeah, basically we use that. If they are cheaper or expensive, uh, I couldn't say that. I'm not uh, very clear if they would cost more or less, because if comparing, for example, with catalytic particles like gold, gold is really expensive, or platinum, are generally more expensive, but I'm not sure about the air rate elements. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, we are now approaching one o'clock, so uh, it's the final round of questions, if you have anything else to ask. Stella, which which is the final system that you envisage? Is is something small, big, medium size, and for which application? Which application do you have really in mind for the project? Yeah, uh, it depends on the concept we use. As I was saying, maybe I can share it again the screen. Um, we have two concepts uh, related. I mean, to the hardware part or to the well to the fabrication of the sensor. And in one of them, we have already the basis of the of the chip or the beginning, let's say, the for the chip. Because uh, Isabel, for example, was working in collaboration with the University of Barcelona, and they were able to produce this micro light for the place. So we have in this concept, for example, I'm not sure if it's possible to see, wait a minute, here. We have this this part, let's say, somehow developed without the photo detector. So it's expected we will be able. I mean, we have already the LEDs on the on the membrane of the sensor, and we expect we can introduce this photo detector as well as part of this system, so it can be integrated. I mean, in a size that more or less we have now for our sensors. And uh, but for the other concept, the one that. Uh, combines uh, chemoresistive principles and luminescence, uh, this is uh, something kind of new. So uh, the measures are expected to be just in with discrete elements at the moment, just at laboratory level. And if it works, we will see the way to integrate this into a chip. So for the moment, this is really all this uh, discrete and at laboratory level only. And I think you had another question, but now I don't remember. Ah, yeah, and the application. And the application, as I was saying, it's uh, directed to detect uh, greenhouse gases because these gases are not uh, usually easy to detect by um, this type of uh, sensors, metal oxides. 
they tend to not be absorbed that easy in the surface of metal oxide. So it's really a challenge to try to detect them. And we expect what with the new uh, group of materials that we are going to test, uh, this will be improved somehow. And also the combination of the mechanisms. Thank you. I think there are some people is writing on the chat, so we will wait a minute in case sure. another question comes through. Do you think we will have gas sensors in the cell phones anytime? Actually, there are. There are some uh, models, I think, now, Chinese models, in which they include already sensors in the mobile. I, I mean, they are just to play and so on. Probably their selectivity and so on is not that good. But, yeah, users, users sound, sometimes like to have more things, even if they don't work completely good. But I know they, there are already cell phones with that. Okay, Pablo asks if uh, he can watch the talk later. Uh, yes, the talk has been, is being recorded. It will be available on Connecta. I think that on Connecta it takes like 24 hours to appear, so it will be available on Monday. And then all of the um, previous talks are also on the YouTube channel of the of the center. But yes, it will be available. Okay, so it's one, three. Uh, anything else you want to add, Stella? No, nothing else. If somebody has uh, more questions or something, well, you know where we are. And yeah, you can come to our office at any time. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you, everybody who attended. And um, we will see you next week as well. Uh, it will be... Um, Next Friday at 12.30, as always, uh, it's uh, Geoffrey Pallares will present uh, the European project X-Files. So that's it. Thank you very much and have a good Friday and a good weekend. Bye. You too. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.